What's up, what's up? This is for, uh, for teachers and for parents out there. It's just a quick how to set up a Google account if you haven't done so already. Uh, the reason why I'm saying this is because it's gonna help create a classroom that's unique to you where you can share this folder out to your students and it doesn't have any connection to your personal Gmail account. So we're gonna go into that right now. Here we go. All right, cool. So what I did is I, I signed in under uh, SC, how to 2020 at gmail.com for 2020. Now this is creating a new account. All you have to do is click add account and then you can create this. Um, so for me, I would have clicked my original account and then you go into sign out or add account, which would be down here. Cool. So then create a name that you want uh, for this that you'll remember pretty easily and then click next. If it's already utilized, which is what this one is, uh, we'll have to create an account uh, for myself. Okay, you gotta come up with the first name, the last name. I'm just gonna use Charles and Smith. And then go ahead and go over here to your name, SC uh, how to uh, 2020 at gmail.com. Create a password. I'm gonna change this later on, but password for today will be um, how to 2020. And uh, so if it says choose a stronger password, go ahead and just do that. And so I've changed my password as well. Uh, phone number for this, we're going to stop the share real quick because I got to put my phone number in that. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just do that real quick. And then it's gonna ask you to then verify it. It's gonna send you a code. And when you get that code, go ahead and get that from your phone. So then once you have that is verified, everything is good here. You put your birthday in. And then it'll ask you to put your gender. Now again, I have a lot of this as blocked right now so you can't see it. Um, get more, you can skip all that good stuff. All right, now let me go into, you'll go through the policy and procedures uh, tab, and then you'll click I agree. I just wanna make sure that nothing is cool. So now you have your account, and let me share the screen again. So then you have your screen, boom. Now what you do there after you've signed up with your Google account is you can create folders. So I'm gonna come over here, create some folders. I'm gonna go to Drive. And notice that there's nothing in here at all except for the general get started. You can click at that if you want to. Um, I normally just delete it because I've seen it so many times, but feel free to click through that and get the things that you need to. What I do now is new folder. Click on folder. And I was a high school math teacher and I had different sections for this. So then if for me, I would say my geometry. Um, 2020, what I'm doing there is creating a folder for geometry 2020. And then also, I also taught statistics. So that's my 2020. Now I had multiple sessions inside of this. So what we're gonna do here uh, is you're gonna create folders for your classroom. Now, yes, this, this seems like a lot in the beginning, um, but once you're finished with this, you won't have to recreate. You get to share folders with information with people. So I'm gonna create a first hour um, a first hour folder, a second hour folder, um, a third hour folder, and that would be all the sections that I have for this third hour. Now again, go based off of what you have. It makes it easier for what you need to do. Now inside of these folders, there's two things I'm gonna do. One, 
I'm gonna open up the first hour folder and I'm gonna create a new folder called um, content slash assignments. All right, now that is one that I'm gonna share with everybody. So all the content, all the assignments that I have, I'm gonna share that with them. The next one is I'm gonna create um, different teams. Now, I, I strongly recommend um, staying away from group learning when it comes to online learning. Because if you go into uh, group learning with online learning, in my experience of four years, being a student in that, it tends to be one person doing all of the work and everybody else kind of just putting some things in, but it's one person creating everything. So as teachers and educators, I would avoid that and just use teams. And what I mean by teams is we have team one, say you have 35 kids in a class or 30 kids in a class, you have six teams. Now in those team folders, they can post their work. So all you're doing is sharing the content and assignments, and then you're sharing team one with everybody in team one. Team two, you'll share it with them. And here's a way that's quick and easy to look at the folders. Team three, um, well, we have four teams. We'll just say four teams, so it's not 30 students, but again, you would have 30 students. Team four, and then team five. Well, let's go to six since we already have it. And it's pretty simple, pretty easy that you can just click through new folder. Cool. So now with this, when you go into your content and assignments, go to your regular Dropbox, whatever you have um, that already stores all of your content, and you can just instantly load that into these content and assignments. What you're gonna do here is you're gonna go to copy or uh, share. And in here, you don't want editing access, you just want view only or they can download. And then you're gonna go create shareable link. And you're gonna copy the link. And then using Remind or using whatever platform that you utilize, um, you can then push this out to all of your students. Uh, you can send it through email, you can check in with your register uh, and counselors and see if they can give you a list of the emails and you can just push that out to the students. If you're using PowerSchool or a website, um, online, which is obviously a website, but if you uh, utilize a website, you could then post your links for those classes there. And it already copies, copies it for you. Now, the next part, all of your assignments live here. So when you go in here, you have all of your assignments, all the things that you need to do, they're all in here, it's great. And here's the thing too, now this is a valuable resource for you for the future because you already have things organized in a way that pushes it out. And a lot of schools have already utilized this. So you already know how to use Google and everything else. So this pushes it through. You just transfer information from one Google uh, account to the next. So let me stop share my screen real quick and I'll show you what that looks like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump into my other account. Uh, so I'm gonna add another account, open up my other account, which is my personal one. So I'm gonna go into my personal one. I'm gonna show you what I've kind of done with some of my, my classes in the past. Sorry, mine was on Dropbox. Let me go into that instead.
So I'm still here, still here. Just checking this out real quick. Okay, let me share the screen again. Okay, so on here, we're in my uh, personal Dropbox file, and you'll notice that I have different folders here, um, and then we'll go into geometry. Now in geometry, I already have things here. I have my notes, so what I can do is I can do one of these quick um, split screen shares, come here, I can take my content and assessments, pull it out as a new window. And then again, if you don't have a lot of space on your computer screen, like I don't have a lot right here, if you had two screens, that would be great. But if not, it's all good. All right, so what I could do here is I could take this and just drag it straight in, or I could upload uh, to my Google Drive and go from there if they were linked. So you could either download everything and then drop it in, or uh, you can link, you could add this to your own personal Google Drive, which is what I would do, and then drop it in. So that's just quick and easy that you can do. Um, so what that would look like then is if I went into each one of these, I can go into my different folders. Like this it already has everything in here that I need. Boom, I can send it over. Um, there was also Google Drives that we utilized. Um, again, I went to, I taught at Thornwood. So there's different things in here. Common Core Units, which was a shared drive. I can go into each one of those and then add in. So again, you're not doing, you're not redoing the work. Um, you already have things stored. You just copy and paste it in and then share that with them based off of what you want them to. And I know a lot of students right now or a lot of people are going into the just how can you retain the content. Now, the reason why we have the team folders is now you put five students in this class or in this team folder. They could put anything in here. You could even create a quick Excel sheet inside of that folder. You can call it team one. And first hour is the folder that we're in. And then you have name, uh, you have assignment, and you have completion date. And then you have notes slash comments. And they can put stuff in here. They can have dialogue in here. They can open up. So if I'm working on this, it's live, and other people from their team can work on it. Now, again, notice that I said stay away from group work. And then I'm also talking about teams because it's different. The assignment that you give is an individual assignment. They can post things in here. They're all still accountable for what they're doing, but they post things into this. They can add their own files into this. So for when you do team one, you want to give them um, access. Now, this is based off of your team, the, the students that you have. You can keep this as editable can organize and edit so that way they can add things into it. So it's not you putting everything in there, um, but just make sure you, you check uh, daily. And as a, as a second thing, make sure they email you um, or email to this drive because sometimes you're gonna have students that accidentally delete something and they didn't mean to delete, delete somebody else's, but they might've done that. So that's just a quick how to set up a Google Classroom, even though you don't have to pay for this, um, it's something that you can use. Um, some things that I would look into if you haven't done it before is remind.com. Um, um, this is great and easy. You can send out a quick link, quick code. Another thing that I've utilized in the past that you can use for this would be class, uh, class Dojo. Now, I've done this before in my statistics class, which were all seniors. You can click on this. I have some information. If you want, just ask me questions. I can help you out with that. Um, again, I don't sponsor any of these events. We are not sponsored by these um, applications, uh, but these are some useful resources that I've used um, as a student or as a teacher. So that's a quick how to set up your Google Classroom, how to set up a, uh, a Google Drive for the things that you're going to do. If you have, and again, you're only sharing summary, you're only sharing a viewable version of the folders inside of the folder. So I'm only showing, sharing a viewable um, access to first hour. I'm only sharing it as viewable versus um, editable. 
because I just want them to make sure that they can only access the resources, download them, and they're not changing anything on here. That is huge. Do not share an editable version of all of your assignments, all of your things, because something's going to get deleted at some point accidentally. It's happened in the past. Um, so that way you're good. You do it for each class that you do. So in here, I'll go here, share. And it, you have to click this. Make sure it clicks view only. And then you'll see the icon of an eyeball. So if you see the icon of a pencil, that means that they can edit. If you see a, a content or an eyeball, that means that they can only view. That's what you want. You don't need their email addresses. You can click shareable link. You can click copy link. And then you send it out either through your registrar or from somebody who has access to their emails and create that. I know some teachers have used Remind before. Remind is you can then send a text message that's not connected to your phone to the students who've already signed up for that. Um, so those are just some quick tips. If you need some more, go ahead and reach out at www.supercamp.com. Check out our Supercamp um, YouTube channel and I can show you that real quick. So YouTube, go in here. And then we'll go to uh, Super Super Camp, and then you can go ahead and just click on Super Camp. And there's a bunch of resources in here already, different refresher series that you can utilize. So go ahead and check that out. Feel free if you need to add more vid or see more videos. You could even look at just videos itself. We have a bunch of refreshers already in here. Go ahead and subscribe to it and check out more things. Cool? That's all I got for you right now. Have a great day. Peace.